Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Trinity United Methodist Church. We're glad that you're here this morning in person and online. Welcome. Today is Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church, the receiving of the Holy Spirit. We wish to thank Terry Butler and Patricia Dell for the music ministry this morning. And on Pentecost Sunday, the question to ask yourself as we prepare for worship is a fill in the blank. Holy Spirit, help me too. Please stand and join me in the opening prayer. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, pour out your power. Holy Spirit, pour out your presence. Holy Spirit, pour out your truth. Holy Spirit, pour out your life. Grace upon grace, strength upon strength, life upon life.
responsive scripture reading comes from the Revelation 22nd chapter. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come. Holy Spirit, come as guiding fire, lighting the way through our wilderness. Holy Spirit, come as cleansing fire, burning away all that is false and fruitless. Holy Spirit, come as refining fire, making our words, our ways, and our hearts pure. Holy Spirit, come as prophetic fire, releasing the gospel shut up in our bones. Holy Spirit, come as empowering fire, granting gifts to heal and transform the world. Holy Spirit, come as unifying fire, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come, Holy Spirit, come. This time of year, we honor the graduates uh, who have graduated sometime during the past year. And so, uh, would you join me in celebrating the graduates as we... Let's offer a blessing for our graduates. Holy and mighty God, we thank you for these fine, fine folk, these faithful folk uh, who have been blessed by your people. We thank you for Glenn Wood and the scholarship committee. We thank you for all the folks that have uh, given to make their educations possible. We pray that you would bless them and empower them for greater and greater good in our world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
and preparing for their offertory this morning, recognize that God has been generous to us. He has given us life and abundant blessings, forgiveness and eternal life through his Son, our Savior Jesus. And he gives us the Holy Spirit, providing wisdom and guidance. A generous person has a heart that loves the Lord. The Holy Spirit transforms us into one who is generous and loving. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your Son, our Savior, and his words on giving. As the Holy Spirit moves us, let us continue to be faithful, generous, and sacrificial givers. Bless our giving as fuel to the fire. The presence of your Holy Spirit provides through us into the world. We thank you as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Holy Spirit, we pray with thankful hearts and minds for the opportunities and obligations we have as children of the Most High God. Jesus makes us heirs and adopted by you, O oh God. And we know there are no accidental adoptions. Cleansed by the blood of Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we pray that we may now see and respond as you would have us do. Cause us to see the forgotten and the lost. Move us to feed the hungry and the spiritually starved. Motivate us to lift up the lowly and to offer healing to the hurt. As we celebrate the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in us, cause us, O oh God, to be contagious Christians so that others will know Jesus also. We lift up the global United Methodist Church in this grand transition time. We specifically pray your blessing upon Pastor Lisa and Reverend Linda in their pulpit transitions. You know our minds and hearts, Holy Spirit, and you respond to us as we pray together as Jesus taught his disciples saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel song is We're Standing on Holy Ground.
Would you join me in thanking God for Cheryl Carr and the United Methodist Women? Thank you. I'm honored to serve as president of Trinity's United Methodist Women's Unit here. For 30 years, a major outreach of this unit was supporting children in the Dominican Republic through the COPA program. In 2020, 14 ladies in two circles supported COPA children with a total in sponsorships of $2,650. But at the end of 2020, COPA ended sponsorships because, praise God, they became self-sustainable. So UMW started looking and praying for another mission to support in 2021. I feel it is not a coincidence that an opportunity for us to provide clean water system for a church in Cuba came across my email earlier this year. What caught my eye is that the unit cost $2,600, all inclusive, exactly the same amount we had paid to COPA in 2020. God was answering our prayer. Let me tell you a bit about the water situation in Cuba. The conditions are awful. People get water from wells, cisterns, streets, at location where some water is only available two days a week. Dan Christofferson, who's the Florida Conference District Mission Coordinator, put a picture of the purification unit on Facebook with the comment, this water purification system is available to all. Just message me if you are interested. Well, the results confirmed what he's been telling people in the United States for eight years. The water in Cuba is contaminated. In 24 hours, Dan had 51 requests from Cuban pastors for the system. This water purification system is built for all situations. That's why it's so popular. The first 26 systems were delivered to the International Airport in Havana, Cuba on August 23, 2016. Currently, there are 79 working systems scattered across the country of Cuba. These units are producing fresh, clean water to thousands of Christians and non-Christians alike. Plus, it's bringing people to the churches to receive the living water of Jesus Christ. There's no limitation to use. They use the same system across Cuba. It simplifies training, installation, maintenance, and the purchase of filters and bulks. It's a proven system. On May 1st, a letter with this small envelope went to all the members of UMW in this unit, asking if they'd like to donate to this project. We made May 17th a deadline to see if we could raise the money and then would decide whether we would move forward into ordering a, a unit. Last Thursday, Nancy Masterson, our unit treasurer, deposited into our UMW Clean Water System for Cuba Fund $3,940. I get, I get so emotional. Wow. Our awesome UMW women raised that in 17 days, $1,340 more than what was needed. The system is ordered, and a bonus is that it will go to Pastor Yolanda Hernandez Church in Cuba. Our unit supports her yearly salary, which is a whopping $360. We are thrilled that she will get this unit. It is not a fast process, so we will continue to pray that all goes smoothly. What will we do with the extra money that was collected for this project? We feel God is calling us to bless another Cuba church with the water purification system. And with the UMW's generosity so far, we're close to having the needed amount for a second one. So we're going to take a step in faith and keep our UMW Clean Water System for Cuba Fund open 
to receive donations and hopefully be able to order another one soon. <clears throat> For the money, nothing will make a bigger impact on the people of Cuba than clean water. It's so simple, yet overlooked so often. Even by us, we know we just turn on a faucet and we have water, clean water. I am in awe of these United Methodist women who are so generous, so faithful, so committed to our purpose, which in part says to expand concepts of mission through participation in the global ministries of the church. But the highest praise goes to God who puts opportunity in front of us. We just need to respond, here I am, Lord, or we can do this. Thanks be to God. This morning, we finish our sermon series based on the stained glass window, and so I invite you to look at the window one more time. And in looking at the window, I invite you to look at the curved sections that you find in the middle. And so, shout out loud what those curved sections remind you of. The, the chalice, sure, you can see the bowl of the chalice right there near the cross beam of the, uh, of the cross. Uh, go ahead and write it online too, right, write in the chat what you see. What, what do the curved sections remind you of? Arms of praise. Arms of praise. Love that. Glory. Glory. Beautiful. Beautiful. Someone at the first service said it reminded them of the world. It looked like a globe to them. Uh, the creator of the window said that these circles represent a nimbus. I had to look up what that was. Uh, a nimbus is uh, when you see in a, like a religious painting and there are halos, they're called nimbus. And so uh, it was to represent the divine, to rep represent the holy. Uh, when I look at the window, what I see uh, is water. I see ripples, water ripples. And so today we are going to be telling the story of Pentecost and talking about the ripples of the Holy Spirit. And so join me in the story of Pentecost. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he promised I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. The advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. In Acts chapter 1, on the day in which Jesus ascended into heaven, Jesus promised, John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my faithful witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Ten days later, Jesus fulfilled the promise. Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came the sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each of them heard them speaking in the native language of each amazed and astonished, they said, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it 
that we hear each of us in our own native language. Parthian, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. Isn't it amazing to read those verses as we are praying for a lasting ceasefire and peace in Israel? All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let it be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I love it when we come to a day when Christians all over the world are reading the same scripture passage on the same day. Today is Pentecost. It's one of those days. And so where do you see the ripples of the Spirit? I see the ripples of the Spirit in our graduates, in all the folks along the way that invested in our graduates, parents and family and friends and mentors and teachers and folks who raise money for scholarships. I see ripples that are already taking place in their life and ripples of their lives as they will bless and influence others. I see the ripples of the Spirit in the United Methodist Women, in mission projects which we all pray will one day be owned and run by the folks they are brought to. Hallelujah, it's happened with COPA. And now, another opportunity to present, presents itself. Clean water in Cuba. Uh, when I was able to go to Cuba a couple of years back, I saw these clean water uh, purification systems uh, at work. And what happens is that the system is installed at a house because most of the Methodist uh, Christians in Cuba worship in house churches. And so it's installed at a house and the neighborhood comes to the house regularly to get water. And so relationships are built and conversations happen and the good news is shared and folks come to faith and they're baptized and I see ripples. I see ripples in prayer and generosity and little bits of money gathered faithfully which come together and grow. I see ripples of the Holy Spirit. I see ripples of the Holy Spirit here in the Pentecost story. Right? Jesus says in Acts chapter 1, you will be my witnesses. Not you might be my witnesses. You can be my witnesses if you, you know, think it's all right. No, 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 no. You will be my witnesses. You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, into the ends of the earth. It's like a pebble in the pool. 
and the ripples just keep flowing. And then we have in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit is poured out on the disciples. They are from Galilee, and yet they are speaking in many different languages. Why? Because folks from all over the known world have gathered in Jerusalem for the festival of Pentecost. We read that crazy paragraph of people from all over the world, and they hear in their own language. They hear the disciples uh, proclaim the goodness of God and the glory of God and Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. They hear Peter preach. 3,000 folks come to faith that day, and what happens? A lot of them go home, and it spreads. That's what happens. The Holy Spirit comes and the tongues of fire dance on people's heads and the ripples happen. When I look at that window and I see that descending dove, I see water. I see the waters of baptism. And so come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit and rest on me. You know, come and, and dwell in me and through me, just as you did at Jesus' baptism. It happens at our baptism, too. The Holy Spirit rests on us and resides in us. And then what happens? Holy Spirit, reveal who I am. Holy Spirit, reveal who I am. At Jesus' baptism, you know, the heavens open up, the the dove descends and the voice says, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. It happens at our baptism too. The Holy Spirit comes. We are anointed with the Holy Spirit and we are revealed. We are revealed as children of God. We are revealed as beloved members of the family. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. Holy Spirit, come and reveal us. But the story doesn't stop there. Holy Spirit, come and ready us. The disciples had been with Jesus for three years, listening to the teaching, uh, trying things out. Sometimes they'd get it right. You know, they'd say, yes, you, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Yes, you are the resurrection and the life. And sometimes they would absolutely blow it. You know, Peter practically drowning because he's trying to walk on water. Peter sticking his foot in his mouth and Jesus says, get thee behind me, Satan. Peter denying Jesus and then being restored. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my sheep. And here's Peter preaching at Pentecost and how were they able how were they able to speak in all those languages and and do things abundantly more than we can ask or imagine and preach and folks come to faith because they'd been praying at the ascension Jesus says the Holy Spirit's going to come you need to go back to Jerusalem and start praying the Holy Spirit's coming so there's 10 days between the Ascension and Pentecost. And so that's what they do. 120 of them go back and they start praying. Day one, day two, day three. I bet they thought something was going to happen on day three, right? Jesus runs from the dead. Day three, nope, keep praying. Day four, day five, day six, day seven, day eight, day nine, day ten. They are readied because they have prayed, they have waited on the Spirit, they have asked for the Spirit, and the Spirit comes with power. And so, Holy Spirit, rest on me and reside in me. Holy Spirit, reveal who I am. Holy Spirit, ready me. And Holy Spirit, release me. That's what happens on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is released in the lives of this 120 folks. The Holy Spirit is released in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And isn't that what we pray for this Pentecost? 
Holy Spirit, rest and reside. Holy Spirit, reveal my belovedness. Holy Spirit, ready me. I am anointed for action, and Holy Spirit, release us. Release us into the world. Rich Velotis, a pastor I follow on Instagram, says this, The Holy Spirit is not a reward for good behavior and unwavering faith. Hallelujah, right? The Holy Spirit is a gift to those who turn to Jesus and wait on him. When I look at that window, that dove is moving, right? It is like dive bombing. It is coming in. There, there, is, there is soaring. There is spirit. And those ripples are moving. They are moving. And that's what happens. The Holy Spirit comes and moves in us and releases us. And so let's pray. Holy Spirit, anoint us for action. Name and claim us again as beloved children. Holy Spirit, empower us by your might. Holy Spirit, make us steadfast and vulnerable. Holy Spirit, strengthen us in our soul and character. Strengthen us in virtue and honor. Strengthen us to build up and make way. Pour out your truth and your presence upon us, generous and creative, that we may step out in love and good deeds. I invite you to put your hand over your heart and to renew your baptismal vows with me. And after I ask the question, Shout out loud a hearty I do. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. I do. Amen and amen. Our closing hymn is Spirit of the Living God. I invite you to stand as you are able. Please sing along if you're at home and uh, feel free to lift your hands to uh, wave the Spirit.
beloved of God, go in peace and power. Go to love. Go to serve. Go with the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.